BPL smell again? Let's talk about it. So surprisingly, there is one video in particular that everyone who comes to my page seems to be excited to interact with, and that is the BBL smell video. So for some reason, the BBL smell discussion is not going away. While I know that there are some issues with the quality of that video, how close the camera is, maybe even the editing of that short, please do not mistake the amateurness, which truly it is, I was an amateur, I still am, of that video with my career as a board certified plastic surgeon. So let's break down why fat necrosis isn't really a thing when it comes to the BBL smell. And the BBL smell really does have to do with hygiene. So let's start with fat grafting, right? So plastic surgeons, the definition of a plastic surgeon is someone who moves tissue around. Now we can move tissue around in different ways. And one of the ways that we do that is by creating grafts. Grafts are pieces of tissue that by definition, you are removing them from their original blood supply and then relying on the blood supply where you put them in order for them to live. We've done that with skin grafts for decades and in more recent history have been doing that with fat. So literally sucking out fat molecules placing it in places where we want it to be, and then basically demanding of the body to create new blood vessels into that fat. The key to a graft is that that graft has to be surrounded by the recipient site, right? Because if we're asking for the recipient site to provide blood supply to that graft, it needs to be in close contact. So how does fat necrosis happen? Fat necrosis happens when you're basically clumping graft, 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 none of it has blood supply. And so all that graft that, that is not in contact, direct contact with recipient site, with potential for blood vessel ingrowth, dies. I actually do a ton of fat grafting. I do not like doing BBLs, even though I do them, <laughs> even though I do them. But I do a ton of fat grafting and I actually do a lot of, ton, uh, a lot of fat grafting to the breast. For breast reconstruction, for breast augmentation, for all kinds of different purposes. And so I see fat necrosis a fair amount. So here's the deal. Fat necrosis is a sterile process, meaning that there isn't bacteria on the inside of you, unless you have an infection, right? And so fat dying happens in a sterile process. And one of two things happens to that fat. If it's small enough of an area of fat necrosis, it gets reabsorbed by the body and broken down by the body. If it is too large to break down, it forms a clump, it forms a lump. And that lump can get broken down manually and then again be kind of um, broken down into a smaller particle that can then be reabsorbed by the body. That in and of itself, because it's, it's in a sterile environment, does not have a smell. So I've seen comments that said fat necrosis is a thing. It is a thing, but it's a thing that doesn't cause a smell inherently. I've seen comments that said the flesh is dying from the inside. That's a little bit aggressive. <laughs> but also, in a sterile environment, there is no reason why that would have a smell. Here's where a smell might come in. There is fat necrosis plus an open wound plus some bacterial overgrowth or growth. You have to have those three factors in place for there to be an actual smell that's perceptible to others and to yourself. So what that means is that the person would have wounds that are not healing, fat necrosis on top of that, and then bacterial entry from the local environment. And then the growth of that bacteria to actually then be enough to produce a smell. What that means is that for most people, fat necrosis may be a thing, but it's not causing a smell. And so if there is an inherent smell, it's because there has to be some bacterial growth, some bacterial interference, some bacterial presence. Without that, we don't really have a source of a smell. So what is the source in a normal BBL? The source is people who aren't able to wash properly for whatever reason, and so get areas of bacterial or even sometimes fungal growth. Hopefully that makes sense. Leave your questions in your comments below. 
And please be positive. I'm hoping this video quality is better and more suitable to your liking. Um, as always, love you lots and bye for now.